Hello everyone and welcome to the Biological Sciences webinar. My name is Mark Willis. I'm a professor in the Department of Biology and the chair of the Department of Biology. And I'm Dr. Rich Druschel. I'm senior instructor and executive officer in the Department of Biology. First, I'll give you an idea, uh, an idea of what we're going to cover uh, in the webinar today. Um, first, um, we'll give you a brief introduction to the various majors in the biological sciences. Um, go over in detail the first year courses for biology, systems biology, biochemistry, and nutrition majors. Um, then I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, the opportunities that you'll have to do undergraduate research um, if you're in the biological sciences. Um, and then we'll have some answers to some common questions at the end. So the programs in biological and sciences include a basic biology major, you can get a BA or a BS degree, systems biology, which is um, nested within the biology department, biochemistry, which you can also get a BA and BS in, and nutrition, um, which you can focus either on human nutrition or nutritional biochemistry and metabolism. So um, these uh, majors all are great preparation for you for uh, if you want to continue to graduate school or uh, a lot of our um, majors are pre-healthcare. So many biological sciences majors are pre-medical, pre-dental, pre-vet, or pre-law. Um, uh, the, one of the major bonuses of these majors is their, um, the undergraduate curriculum is hard. Um, these are hard classes that you're going to have to take, um, and they're a good, they will prepare you for professional schools and graduate school. Um, you'll, there are abundant opportunities for you to be involved in um, research projects in a variety of different um, venues, um, and depending on your desire and your your skills, there's opportunities for you to actually be essentially the pr principal investigator and conduct your own independent research projects. You'll also, through largely through work in labs, have an opportunity to make contacts that will help you with your next step in getting into graduate or professional schools. So this is me. This is you. Go for it. All righty, so what I'm going to do now is uh, go over some of the common requirements that all of the biological sciences majors have. And it's a very nice feature that there is so much uh, overlap in common with the requirements for biology, chemistry, and physics, and math. That means that you really uh, can hedge your bets on which major you want to choose until as late as the second uh, semester of your, uh, of your sophomore year, your second year. So all the biological sciences majors typically have two or three semesters of biology uh, with laboratories, four semesters of chemistry with labs, and that's structured as two semesters of inorganic chemistry and two semesters of organic chemistry, two semesters of physics with labs. Usually that's taken during the, uh, the third year, the junior year, though there are some variations for the different uh, degrees, and uh, typically two semesters of mathematics, uh, typically uh, freshman calculus, though again some of the degrees require an additional two semesters of mathematics. Uh, but because of this common overlap, you uh, can uh, not have to worry about committing, say, to biochemistry right away or chemistry right away. Um, you can wait until you have a couple semesters under your belt, have a chance to talk to some faculty, talk to some upperclassmen uh, to finally decide uh, what it is uh, that you are most interested in. Uh, we get a lot of questions about uh, what's the difference between a Bachelor of Arts degree or a Bachelor of Sciences degree. Um, all of our degrees in the biological sciences give you the BA or the BS option. Well, the BA tends to be a less specialized degree. Um, it usually has fewer credit hours required and it allows more flexibility in scheduling. So typically if someone is interested in doing multiple majors or uh, 
uh, setting aside a semester, a free semester so that you can study abroad or trying to graduate a semester early, a year early. It's easier to do this uh, with a BA degree uh, because you have more flexibility in the scheduling. The BS degrees, however, tend to be more quantitative. Uh, they often have uh, more, uh, they have additional specific course requirements on top of the ones for the BA. And they require undergraduates uh, to do research. And that's typically two semesters of undergraduate research. Now, uh, because the BAs are more, or the BSs are less, uh, let me back up. Because the BS degrees are more specialized, uh, that means that if you aren't sure whether you want to do a BA or a BS, you need to start out in the BS curriculum and do that until such time as you are certain that you don't want to do it anymore so that you can then fall back to the BA requirements. And uh, this is important because uh, some of the BS programs require engineering calculus and engineering physics more, uh, versus um, a general arts and sciences uh, calculus and physics. And so if you started out in arts and sciences and took the arts and sciences versions of those and then decided to switch to the BS, you would have to retake the calculus and physics courses, whereas the BA degrees will take the engineering calculus and physics and let you fall, uh, let you fall back with those. So in general, I mean, at uh, CWRU, if you have a choice of a more specialized program versus a more generic program, if you can't decide you need to do the special version until you're sure you don't want to do it, otherwise you may find yourself having to re uh, repeat uh, courses. So what I'm going to do in the next sequence of slides is uh, show some semester schedules that uh, illustrate uh, what courses you have to take in a given term. So we were just talking about the common sequence of courses in the biological sciences for BA and BS students. So here's what a typical fall semester will look like, your first uh, semester here as a freshman at CWRU. Well, everyone has to take a SAGE's first seminar. Um, you'll be taking an appropriate calculus course that'll either be Math 121, uh, which is the engineering uh, calculus course if you're in a BS program, or Math 125, which is the arts and sciences or social sciences calculus course. You'll be taking an introductory chemistry course. Um, that'll either be Chem 105, Principles of Chemistry, um, or possibly Chem 111, Chemistry for Engineers, if you're trying to figure out do you want to be an engineer or not. Uh, we'll come back to this uh, later in the presentation. But again, if you can't uh, figure out whether you want to do engineering or not, you have to do engineering until you decide that you don't, or you'll end up repeating courses. So some chemistry course, either uh, ordinary or engineering chemistry, then the first of three courses that the biology department offers that are the core foundations in biology. Uh, Bio 214, Genes, Evolution, and Ecology, a three credit course, lecture course, and then a corresponding one credit lab, uh, Bio 214L. Um, and then a space for phys ed if you want, or if you're a varsity athlete, a place to put uh, uh, your, uh, your varsity athletic activity. And so your first semester as a freshman, will be 15 or 16 credit hours uh, without doing any overloads. If we expand this to the spring semester to look at the uh, uh, entire first year, the spring is mostly a continu continuation, continuation of what you did in the fall. So you will do uh, the first of two university seminars in the SAGES program. You'll take your second semester calculus course, either Math 122 if you're in engineering calculus, or Math 126 if you're doing Arts and Sciences. Your second semester chemistry course, either Chem 106, Ordinary Principles of Chemistry 2, or if you're still in the engineering track, Engineering 145, which is the chemistry of materials, and the laboratory course for freshman chemistry, Chem 113. You'll take the second of the three core courses in biology, Bio 215, Cells and Proteins, and typically the corresponding lab, Cells and Proteins Lab, and then again, a place for a phys ed activity or a varsity sport. So your spring semester freshman year will be around 16 or 17 uh, credit hours. Now, there are a variety of exceptions for these. This is the common, most general uh, things uh, across all the biological sciences majors. But now as we go through each degree program in particular, we'll see uh, some differences starting to come out. So let's first start with biology and systems biology. So the biology BA and BS fall semester, uh, they are the same. Your SAGE's first seminar, 
an appropriate math course, either uh, 125, 126. Math 120 is sort of a, uh, a, a pre-calculus course if your math diagnostic uh, exam shows that you're not ready to drop into calculus, you may have to take Math 120 before moving to Math 125 or 126, or whatever the next sequence is based on any AP or IB uh, credit that you have, or if you're a transfer student, if you have pre-existing college credit for math. You do Chem 105, first uh, chemistry course, the first biology core course with its lab, uh, 214 and 214L, and phys ed. So that's 14 or 15 hours, depending on whether you're in the three credit Math 120 course or starting right away in Calculus Math 125. For the first year, again, continuations, the Sages University Seminar, the next course in your math sequence, the next course in the chemistry sequence with the uh, principles of uh, chemistry lab, the next course in the biology sequence, Bio 215 with its lab, 215L, and uh, Phys Ed. So again, uh, 16 credits, um, that's a, a conservative schedule uh, for starting out. Systems biology um, is a BS only program and it has a little bit of a different uh, schedule. Uh, systems biology requires four semesters of mathematics. Uh, so um, you'll typically, and it re it's required to be engineering calculus. So assuming that you passed your math diagnostic score, your first, first math course would be engineering calculus one, math 121. Uh, the spring would be Math 122, and then your sophomore year, you would take Calculus 3 and Differential Equations. That's what those 200-level courses are there. Um, you'll do uh, introductory chemistry, um, but unlike the biology, regular biology BA and BS degrees, you'll do the Chem Lab in the fall, Chem 113 in the fall instead of the spring. You'll take the lecture course only for the first biology course sequence, Bio uh, 214, but not the lab. Um, if you were a pre-professional student and needed wet labs in biology, then you would have to worry about squeezing in the Bio214L. But systems biology is, uh, is primarily not a wet laboratory-based biology degree, so there are no re formal requirements for the accompanying labs for the biology core. And then a space uh, for phys ed, so 15 or 16 credits. Uh, second semester, the university seminar, second semester chemistry, a space for an open elective, the next course in the math sequence, wherever you are, the second of the three biology core lecture courses, Bio 215, but again, not the lab, unless you were a pre-med or pre-dent and needed it, and then a place uh, for uh, phys ed. So your first semester and second semester are you know, reasonable course loads, 15 or 16 credits. Now, what's the difference between biology and systems biology, all right? Well, uh, most people, when they think of a biology major, they think of someone wearing a lab coat, working in a wet lab, you know, doing tissue culture or running gels or looking at microscope slides, or possibly out in the field doing you know, some kind of work, studying animal behavior, you know, collecting animals or plants, something like that. Well, um, there are some other problems in modern biology that a person trained to do that kind of layman's traditional view of biology don't have uh, the, the necessary skills uh, to do. So some of these modern problems in biology re really require that you be good at math and that you be good at computation, that you have computer skills. So if you're interested in modeling ecosystems or figuring out evolutionary relationships among animals uh, based on either characters that you measure or uh, DNA or, or amino acid sequences uh, of proteins, um, you can't you know, just be an ordinary old-fashioned zoologist and necessarily have the background to do that. Um, so uh, the people who do have those skills are traditionally people who are applied mathematicians or computer scientists. You know, so th they have the skills to do these kinds of analyses, but they you know, may not even know that biologists have these problems that need to be solved. So systems biology is an attempt to uh, create a biological foundation and create an attractive little sandbox for an applied math person or computer scientist who otherwise would be maybe working in engineering or industry to come and use their skills to analyze biological data, not data that they themselves have collected by going out in, in the field or, or working in the lab to get, but maybe analyzing terabytes of DNA sequences or other quantitative information that someone else, some collaborator who is a wet lab person, um, has collected. 
So that means that um, this intersection of, of mathematics and biology requires a different skill set and a different set of interests. So if you aren't comfortable with math or computers or looking at things in a quantitative way, then systems biology is definitely not you know, for you. Um, and you'll find out very quickly um, what the differences in the, in the curriculum are. So uh, Dr. Willis and I are both in the biology department, so you know, I guess we have talked most knowledgeably about the things in our own department, but there are other departments that teach biological sciences, so we're now going to uh, move uh, through a review of those. So we'll consider now the Department of Biochemistry, which is a school in, uh, which is a part of the uh, School of Medicine here at CWRU. So Biochemistry BA and BS have the same fundamental design um, that the Biology BA and BS do. So a SAGE's first seminar, an appropriate math course. Uh, the BA in Biochemistry requires only two semesters of calculus. The BS in Biochemistry, like the BS in Systems Biology, requires four semesters of mathematics. Um, you can do either the Ordinary Principles of Chemistry course or the Engineering uh, Chemistry uh, course. You take the first of the three core courses in Biology, Genes, Evolution, and Ecology with the lab, and a space for uh, Phys Ed in the first semester. Um, for BA and BS in the second year, it's again continuations. SAGE's University Seminar, the next Calculus course, the next Chemistry course, the next Biology course with its lab, and the uh, inorganic chemistry laboratory with a space uh, for phys ed. Um, it's very important that you uh, either make up your mind early about BS versus BA biochemistry or be willing to do the BS until you decide you don't want to do it because the uh, engineering calculus for the BS, uh, if you didn't do that in your first year, and then decided you wanted to do the BS, you would have to come back and do it again and repeat it. Um, the Department of Nutrition is also in the School of Medicine. Uh, there are two flavors of nutrition. There's human nutrition and there is nutritional biochemistry and metabolism. Both of those degrees offer BA and BS degrees. Um, there is also the opportunity to do the DPD, the didactic program in dietetics, which if you follow that sequence of courses, then at the end you're able to take the uh, dietitian licensing exam. So you can become a licensed practicing dietitian if you follow the DPD. So what does nutrition look like in the fall? Again, very similar to what we've seen before, um, but a few nutrition specific differences. So we'll do our SAGE's first seminar, our first uh, course in chemistry, our first biology core course uh, with its lab. Uh, I'll say a little bit about the biology core labs for nutrition in a little bit. Um, but then you have your choice of either doing nutrition, Nutrition 201, which is the first course in nutrition. It's preferred that you do that in the fall. Or if the course is full, or if you made up your, didn't make up your mind uh, right away, you could substitute the uh, inorganic chemistry lab, Chem 113. Um, if you're a BS in nutrition student, in order to make your remaining uh, semester schedules work out, you need to do the Chem 113 uh, lab in the fall. Then there's a space to take either an open elective or you know, pretty much you know, anything you want, an arts and humanities course, something to satisfy SAGE's requirements in global and cultural diversity, social science, you know, uh, whatever you want. So there's really a lot of flexibility in the human nutrition program. Um, now, I said I would come back to the labs for uh, biology. Um, it turns out that the formal prerequisite for biology labs for human nutrition majors is not the lab for the first core course, but the lab for the third core course, uh, which is called Development and Physiology. Um, however, the uh, lab for the first core course is a formal prerequisite for the lab for the third course. Um, and since many students are human nutrition students are pre-medical or pre-dental and are going to end up taking the biology lab courses anyway, many nutrition students just go ahead and take the Bio 214 lab as a freshman to satisfy that prerequisite for Bio 216L in the second year. Otherwise, they would administratively have to seek an override of that prerequisite, and it simply would save saves them a little bit of time. So if you look in the university bulletin, you won't find a requirement for Bio 214L in the human nutrition program, but 
the advisors of nutrition just sort of recommend that students go ahead and take it anyway to make it easier to take Bio 216L in the second year. The rest of the first year schedule is a university seminar, second semester chemistry, um, either the freshman chem lab or nutrition 201, depending on which you were able to take in the fall, uh, space for open elective, you know, or a SAGES uh, course, actually space for a couple of those courses. So nutrition is really quite a flexible degree, uh, a lot of opportunities for adding a second major or, uh, or, or you know, some minors or having some significant extracurricular activities are going to take some time. Nutritional Biochemistry and Metabolism also has a BA and a BS. Um, like ordinary biochemistry, uh, there's different math requirements depending on whether you're doing BA or BS. BA requires just the arts and sciences two semester sequence. The BS requires a four semester sequence that includes calculus three and differential equations in your sophomore year. Um, first semester chemistry and then nutrition or the Chem 113 uh, lab. It's preferred that you do the nutrition course in the fall, but you can defer it to the spring. The first core course in biology lecture, and then as we mentioned in conjunction with the, the nutrition curriculum, it's kind of recommended that you take Bio 214L, not because it's formally required, but because it's a prereq for the required course Bio 216L in your second year. Second semester, university seminar, the next math course, the next chemistry course, freshman chem lab or nutrition based on what you took in the fall, the second biology core course, and we have indicated here the lab that goes with the second biology uh, core course, Bio215L, Cells and Proteins Lab. It again is not required by any of the degrees and it's not a formal prerequisite for the required Bio216L course, but many students take it because nutritional biochemistry metabolism students are frequently pre-med or pre-dent, and that is a pre-med or pre-dent requirement, having two semesters of uh, wet biology lab. If you've been tracking the uh, credit hours, um, you may go back and uh, watch the, the uh, presentation again. Uh, in general, the biochemistry and the nutritional biochemistry and metabolism uh, first years have a few more hours in them on average than what the BA and the, and the BS do. So you'll see some of these ranging 16 to 18 or 15 to 17, whereas the BA and BS in biology or like maybe 15 or 16, depending upon what calculus course you're taking. <coughs> um, so what I'd like to do now is hand this back to my colleague, Dr. Willis, uh, to talk about undergraduate research opportunities in biology. So all right, you guys. So you can tell from listening to Rich's presentation that um, he's got all the details about um, what you need, the classes that you need, and if you have explicit questions about that, uh, when you get here, he's your man. And so is, uh, the, an alternative for you is our undergraduate coordinator, Ms. Katie Bingman, and the contact information for these guys is uh, prominently displayed on the biology department website. So now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, undergraduate research, this was something that was critically important to my development as a biologist and a scientist, my experience as an undergraduate researcher. In fact, once I got into uh, a research lab as when I was an undergraduate, my grades actually went down because it was so much more fun than classes. So. Um, an undergraduate research experience is really routine for um, uh, biological sciences majors at Case Western Reserve U University. If you want it, you can have it. Um, so there are um, opportunities in any uh, um, biological sciences department, the biology department, biochemistry, and nutrition. Um, uh, there are opportunities um, for research in the engineering school, um, specifically biomedical engineering does a lot of really uh, amazingly cool um, research on um, engineering applications associated with the human body. So if you're interested in healthcare professions, that might be particularly interesting to you. Um, of course, the, the coolest part about um, the bio, biology major and being in the biology department is the, the medical, dental, and nursing schools are literally right across the street. So all of the basic science um, 
departments in those schools um, have faculty who routinely take um, our biology majors into their lab for research uh, purposes. Um, uh, un yeah, like I said, so University Hospitals is across the street from the from CWRU. The Cleveland Clinic is about, depending on where you're working at the Cleveland Clinic, it could be a 10 or 15 minute walk from Case. Um, the Veterans Administration building is maybe a 20 minute walk across uh, University Circle. Um, the Institute of Pathology is literally, again, right across the street from Case Western Reserve University. So all of these um, sort of major biomedical um, institutions are within easy walking distance for you. Um, in addition, the Department of Biology has relationships with the other three major um, biological institutions in the city of Cleveland, the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, Cleveland Metro Park Zoo, and uh, the Holden Arboretum and Cleveland Botanical Garden. Um, all of so we have students who ha are conducting research in all of these institutions. The Natural History Museum again is about a 15 minute walk from the biology department as is the Botanical Garden. Uh, the Metro Park Zoo and Holden Arboretum are uh, a, a drive from school um, but they provide you with the opportunity so basically everything on the list that you're looking at so far will give you the opportunity to do research on essentially any level of biological organization from molecules and cells to whole animals. Um, and finally, um, CWRU um, has uh, an operating farm 10 miles east of us, um, which you could be involved with from an agricultural perspective, but um, many of our ecology and evolutionary biology faculty have active research, field research, going at the farm. So if you're interested in uh, a field-oriented ecology experience, so now your uh, opportunities to do biological research range from molecules and cells to whole ecosystems. So we have everything from soup to nuts for you to experience um, in biological research if, if you want to. Um, so the research areas in the biology department, uh, that is biology faculty, um, uh, include animal behavior and um, how the nervous system generates and controls behavior. That's where I fit in the biology department. Um, but within this, you could work at the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo and study gorilla behavior. Um, uh, invertebrate neuroscience, so all of the members of the biology department who are studying animal behavior and the neural basis work with invertebrate animals. So I study um, uh, how insects fly and track odors. There are other members of our group who study um, how brains encode sensory information and control uh, motor acts of the body. Um, again, almost every basic question associated with the neural control of behavior. Um, we also have plant ecology and plant genetics faculty um, who commonly take undergraduate researchers into their lab and into the field. Um, development, um, animal development and stem cell biology, um, molecular parasitology and global health and disease. Uh, we have a faculty member who studies the number two paras parasitic disease after malaria on our planet. Um, uh, mathematical biology, theoretical ecology, and biological modeling is strongly um, uh, represented in our department. We have some spectacular um, theoretical ecologists in our department if, for those of you who are interested in a more quantitative approach to biological questions. Um, we also have some really cool um, young faculty who are studying evolution and the, uh, how organisms adapt to their um, ecological environment. And one of our newest faculty also studies um, uh, global climate change and animal and plant response to that. So um, 
again, just within the biology department, there's a, a broad range of research experiences available to you. Um, biochemistry and nutrition also um, will take our undergraduates into their research labs. Um, again, across the range of biological organization from proteins and enzymes to um, structural biology, um, the regulation of gene expression, um, the biology of whole cells, um, regulation of metabolism, and the dietary effects on health and disease. So again, there's a, a broad spectrum of um, research opportunities at a variety of different biological organizations. Oh, and food safety. Other common questions will be handled by Dr. Druschel. Um, so what's going to follow now are uh, answers to some questions that we commonly get uh, from first-year students. Um, these are actually a lot of questions that we get from admitted students who are visiting the university trying to decide whether they want to accept an offer of admission to CWRU or someplace else, or high school students, sophomores and juniors who are touring around trying to figure out where they might want to go. So first off, everyone is interested in AP credit because in general, if you can come in with a lot of AP credit, presumably, that will reduce the number of courses that you have to take at your college or university and either enable you to finish sooner, which might represent a financial savings, or might enable you to clear a semester to go study abroad or do an undergraduate research project or something else you know, so that you're not overcommitted in your time. So biology uh, does award advanced placement credit and here's what we do it for. So if you have a score of four on the AP bio exam, that's worth three credits of Biology 114, which is our introductory biology course for non-majors, and it's also required by first-year nursing students as part of their curriculum. So those credits of Bio 114 will go towards the total you need for graduation, but since they're 100 level and you know, equivalent to non-majors course, it does not satisfy anything for a biology major or a biology minor. Um, so if you got a four in the AP bio exam, you still have to do 30 credits of biology for your bio BA or BS, or for your bio BA or your systems biology BS, or 39 credits for your biology uh, BS. If, however, you got a score of five, uh, we give you three credits of 200 level transfer credit. Um, you can use it towards any biology major or minor in the electives requirements but it will not replace your requirement to take the three core courses in biology, bio 214, 215, and 216. Historically, we allowed students who got a score of five to skip the first biology core course with its lab, the bio 214 and 214L uh, course, and drop straight into the second semester course. However, we did some analysis of performance of the students who did that some years ago, and it turned out that the students who dropped into Bio 215 and 215L, even if they had that AP Bio score of 5, they did significantly worse than students who either had no AP credit and took 214 and 214L first, or had the bio AP Bio score of 5 and decided to retake Bio 214 and 214L. So we'll still recognize your achievement of a score of five with three credits of biology credit, but it can't be used to replace the core curriculum. And this is important because a few years ago we reorganized the structure of the core curriculum so that in each of the three core courses, certain common problems were considered and reconsidered at different levels. So genes evolution and ecology, we can consider things at a genetic level. Cells and proteins, you can consider the same problems from a cell biology perspective. Development and physiology, you can look at the whole organism or organ system or developmental biology impact of those things. And so if you skipped over the Bio 214 treatment of one of these uh, models, then you were somewhat disadvantaged if you uh, dropped straight into 215 or 216. So take home message is that all the biology majors must take Bio 214, 215, and 216 most of our majors that aren't systems biology have to also take the three corresponding laboratory courses, 214L, 215L, and 216L. Um, we are often asked, why would you want to major in one of the bio biological sciences? 
versus why would you maybe want to become a biomedical engineer? I mean, those are all, they all have biology in them, right? Well, um, here's kind of my take on how to answer that question. So if you are majoring in the sciences, um, primarily your interest is in observing the natural world and maybe trying to design and conduct experiments that will figure out how that natural world works, so to get to the fundamental principles of how things work. If you're an engineering student, however, typically you know, while your interest is in designing and building and testing physical devices to do useful work in the real world. Now, the inspiration for those physical principles might come from biology, but ultimately you're trying to build a device to get things done. And in order to do that, you need some you know, good math skills, computer skills, and oftentimes you need shop skills to actually cobble uh, stuff together. You know, anyone who does undergraduate research in biology is going to need to develop a few shop skills to cobble some equipment together. But if you're an engineer, you know, you're typically a hobbyist or tinkerer or experimenter in that sense. Um, there are synergies between science and engineering. And so, you know, you don't have to be only a scientist or only an engineer. You can do the useful things from both. Um, but if you're not sure what you want to do, uh, Engineering versus not is one of the fundamental curriculum choices you have to make at Case Western Reserve University because the divergence in curriculum between engineering and non-engineering is immediate right away. Um, that means that if you can't decide whether you want to be a BME or some kind of biological scientist, you have to start in BME and take the engineering calculus and engineering physics and engineering materials and keep doing that until you decide that you don't want to do engineering anymore. At that point, the biological sciences will take your engineering courses as equivalent to the arts and sciences courses and you'll be fine. But if you did it the other way around and started and did two years of biology BA and then decided to become a BME, you would have to repeat your, uh, your calculus courses and if you had taken physics already, you would have to retake your physics courses. So the engineering core is you know, is sort of at a higher quantitative level than the non-engineering core. So you have to do that until you're sure you don't want to do it anymore. Otherwise, you'll end up repeating foundation courses in the sciences. Um, in the last couple of years, uh, there's a new uh, major on campus uh, that came out of the chemistry department called chemistry, chemical biology. And if I'm not mistaken, at this year's commencement was the first uh, graduating class where graduates of the chemical biology uh, program got uh, BA and BS degrees. Uh, so what is chemical biology? Well, this slide kind of shows, uh, tries to show the continuum of study of biological and scientific systems. So kind of at the top here is biology, and at the bottom is physics, and in between are biochemistry and chemistry, and chemical biology kind of is at the in, the, in between spaces between chemistry and biochemistry. So um, how might I choose? Well, if I'm interested in whole organisms or cell and molecular biology, topics in genetics, how ecosystems work, that's kind of biology. If I'm interested in metabolism and classical enzymology, uh, immunology, how our immune systems work to fight off disease, uh, uh, genomics and proteomics, which are um, emerging disciplines, that's probably biochemistry. Chemical biology, uh, since it came out of a chemistry department, um, is interested in how you might manufacture or biosynthesize natural products or build and study the properties of biomaterials and maybe even build little biological inspired machines at the molecular level to, to do some work. Uh, chemistry, you know, is our traditional parts of inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, physical chemistry, analytical chemistry, you know, how chemical reactions happen and the thermodynamic properties that govern them. But then I guess at the basis of everything in our known universe is physics, you know, thermodynamics, electro, you know, electromagnetism, properties of atoms, and even quantum mechanics. So, uh, you know, this isn't uh, you know, an exhaustive summary of, of these topics, uh, but my uh, conversations with uh, people in the chemistry department who were involved in inventing uh, chemical biology said that this is a pretty good representation of where chemical biology fits in the spectrum of the sciences. 
Uh, so if you are interested in additional information about uh, any of the biological science degrees, um, this is the place, this slide is the place uh, to go to find people. So as uh, Dr. Willis mentioned, our undergraduate coordinator in biology, Ms. Katie Bingman, uh, she uh, is someone to contact if you have more questions about biology or systems biology. Um, in the Department of Biochemistry, Dr. Menachem Shoham is their academic representative. Um, if you're interested in nutrition and the uh, didactic program in dietetics, you can talk to Dr. James Swain. Um, and if you're interested in nutritional biochemistry and metabolism, you can talk to uh, Mary Beth Cavanaugh. Um, all these people are knowledgeable. They are the first point of contact for majors, for intended majors, uh, for minors. Um, you may also be able to Google around and find the websites for the various other departments uh, to find additional information that's not uh, covered in this presentation. Well, that's the presentation uh, for today. Um, we look forward to seeing you when you arrive at Case Western Reserve University, and we'll answer any of your further questions then. Thank you for your time.